This is a short movie showing ImagePro Premiere version 9.1 and how to set up and use the Learning Classification feature. The Learning Classification feature is used to classify objects, or in this case nuclei, into a set of defined bins or classes. For example, 0, plus 1, plus 2, or plus 3, or in some other type of category such as positive, negative, or anything else that's appropriate for your particular imaging experiment. Learning classification is based upon using multiple parameters to classify objects based on reference objects or a training set of objects. The key to setting up learning classification is to have an image or a set of images which contain representative samples of the various classes. Once the classification is set up and saved, we can use the classification scheme over and over again, whether counting a few images or used in a batch process mode or in a macro. For the purposes of this video, I've already set up a method on how to segment and count my nuclei or objects of interest for this example. To learn more about count and size features, please see the related videos on count and size. Let's get started. I have a number of images. Um, they're actually taken from some larger images. They're the nuclei I would like to classify. So let me select one of those. I've already counted the objects, but the key here is I have the outlines of all my objects, in this case nuclei, and what I'm going to do is use these to build my learning classification, to build my training set. One important thing here is I'm just building the set. I'm not, this is not really the, the full analysis. Normally in how this is set up and run and using our, our new cell analysis app um, in Image Pro 9.1, I'll be counting the nuclei located in certain structures. But for the training set, I'm just going to select nuclei that are already represented within these structures, and then uh, we'll apply those settings. So in this case, I have my nuclei already counted. I can always see the data if I want to by pressing the data table. But the key right now is I need to classify them. So let's do that. So now I'm going to go to learning classification. The learning classification tool is a nicely structured workflow of the steps needed to classify your objects into the different categories. Starting off, we have the train and save. This is where we can load and save settings once I have my classific classification scheme created. I have two other important icons here, load global and set global. What this will allow me to do is, once I've created a classification scheme on one image, I can set it, go to another image, load it, and then refine my classification scheme. So if you don't have all the representative groupings in any particular image, which is common, we can refine and build that classification and then apply it to multiple images. Here I have a reset. In the second grouping, in the second grouping, I have my add classes. So this is where I can create my classes and where I'll set my reference objects from for each class. Classification measurements. These measurement parameters are coming from count size. And what's important here is if I don't have other, if I don't, there's parameters that I want to use that I haven't set, I can always go back into count size, select types, it will automatically update and they will show up here. Just from experience, I know that most, most of my classification is going to be based upon intensity parameters, so I've just selected that subset. Finally, we'll do our classification where we'll calculate the weighting, statistically separating my different objects into different classes of objects, into the different groupings. We'll do an auto weighting. And then finally, once I have that, I can hit uh, press OK, and that will do the classification. I've also brought up my measurement options because this will be a very nice way of seeing and color coding my nuclei in this case. So let's get started here. I'm going to add a class and you'll notice it gives a class name, the number of objects, the color, a pointer for selecting my reference objects and building that grouping. I can reset and delete any type of class. So let me give it a name. I'm going to say for the first class we'll call it weak. Actually I should say negative. It'll be outlined in blue. I'm simply going to select my select my selection tool. At this point, it gives me a prompt 
for selecting my nuclei. So in this case, I'm going to select one, hold down the control key, select other negative nuclei. Again, I'm picking them out of the, these various structures. Press OK. You notice for that class, it's called negative. I have six. I can add another class. In this case, I'm going to call weak positive. Going back in, selecting. Again, going through the same scheme. Here, I'm going to select some nuclei that have that mix of browns and blues. Ah, there's a few good ones. Continuing. And then I'm going to create my third class. I'm just going to call these positive. So in this case, I'm training, I'm training the software. We're creating a training set now and building up this classification scheme. I'm going to go select those. Here I'm going to select my solid ones. And I'll select a couple of those. Yeah, that's good. And you can also see, if you didn't notice it, for any nuclei or any objects I've already selected, it actually puts a little broken outline around. In essence, to warn you not to select that object. It's showing you previously selected objects. One of the things that you don't want to do is select an object and then put it into the same class. It will lead to inaccurate results. At this point, I'm going to press OK. Next step, these are my measurement parameters. I'm just going to select them all at this point. I'm going to calculate my classifiers, and now you can see my auto weighting. Based upon the objects that I've selected in this case, and using all these parameters, and it will statistically separate my objects now using all of these parameters based upon this weighting. In this case, mean intensity blue channel is the most important, followed by the region intensity mean is actually using a grayscale interpretation of the image, followed by intensity green. When I'm ready, I can press OK, and that will now classify and it will color code all of my previously found objects. Again, this is just building a training set. I'm selecting my nuclei. I'm going to show filled so you can see how it's color coding them. What's also nice is because of this, I've classified these now. I can actually, in my measurements table, it's actually updated. And I have grouping turned on, grouping by class. And it's now showing each group and how many objects or nuclei are falling to each category. Again, doing the, the assay for this particular experiment, normally I would have regions of interest around the structures, or I would have used for example, cell analysis app to automatically find those and only count within those regions. Now, the next part is, once I've created that, I can go set global. As you can see by the directions in the tooltips, I now want to use this on multiple images so I can refine this or apply it to other images. So I'm going to close it, go to another image. In this case, I'm going load global. It's showing you that the number of reference objects for each class, the current weighting, and now I can go in and refine it. I can select one class, all classes, and let's do the same thing. I'm just going to select my negatives, press OK, and what you'll notice is it's added more objects to that. So when I recalculate this, in essence, it's going to take that new information into, into account. So what you'll see is I now have my native class. It's added the next set of reference objects. And with this, when I recalculate, in essence, it'll bring that information into account in doing the classification scheme. If I want to add some more positives, I can simply, again, going through the same scheme. If I make a mistake, I can continue. I can always select and delete it afterwards. Uh, let's pick another one or two here. That's good. Press OK. And calculate classifiers. It updates the weighting. It's now refined it. I can press OK. And it will now 
update the classification scheme. Again, turning on and off filled. You can see how well it's doing. Again, I can come back, refine, work on the same image, keep doing this until I'm happy with my classification scheme. The next step is I want to save this. So what I'm going to do is press the Save button. I'm just going to give it a name. I want to save it. And so just for example, if I want to clear all this out, delete all this, reset all this, just to show how this works, I can delete these, close these images off, in essence, starting fresh. Let's close this one too. I can now go to another image. There we go. Call it my learning classification. I must have had some objects on this one from before. I can load my classification. At this point, I've just reloaded my classification. So it's showing me I have no reference objects on this image and showing me the number of reference objects from the other images that have built in this training set, this classify, classification. At this point, I can press OK. It will update the classification scheme. As you can see, as I turn these on and off, how well it's done. Again, I can use these settings in, in a macro, in batch processing, analyzing just a few images in the data table, just to expand that out a little bit. Depending on what it counts in any particular image, if those objects exist, they will show up here. And then I can also do a, there we go, scroll that up. I can also do group statistics. For more information, please contact your local dealer or local sales office. Thank you.